Hey friends, it's Amy, the Keto Queen. I hope you're having a great day. We're home and we're making meatloaf muffins for dinner tonight. Guys, this is the easiest meatloaf you can ever cook. And it's so delicious. I mean, why make things complicated when you can have it easy? Guys, if you're looking for easy, low-carb, or keto recipes, you've got the right place. And please share this video if you find any of the recipes are super easy and delicious. We're making a side dish of roasted broccoli. All we did was put the broccoli on a baking sheet, heavily drizzled with avocado oil, salt, pepper. I got my oven on 350, and we're going to put these in there in just a few minutes. Guys, this meal takes 15 minutes in the oven on 350. 15 minutes. That's how fast and easy they are. So I like to make them in muffins. A traditional meatloaf is in a meatloaf pan, which takes hours, sometimes a couple of hours to cook, depending on how thick your meatloaf is. When you make it into a meatloaf or a muffin pan, it literally takes 15 minutes. So we are starting off with some ground beef. I've got a pound of ground beef in my uh, mixing bowl, and we're going to add an egg. Guys, it's so fast. Now, I've done this a thousand times over the last five years. I love this meatloaf recipe. If you've had it before and you know it's delicious, go ahead and give me some hearts. And share the video, please. Please share the video if you've had these before and you know they're delicious. I would love for you to do that. All right, the next thing we're going to add is our crushed pork rinds. Now, the way I did it tonight, because I know there are pork... I know there are crushed pork rinds out there that you can use already. I've never found them at my store. But what I did is put my favorite pork rinds, which is Max, the original Max, in a Ziploc bag with my clothespin, rolled it out, and crushed them. That's how I did mine. So easy. You can use your hands if you want to. I used to do it that way, too. It's just much faster with a rolling pin. You also can use your food processor, but that's just something else to clean. You can throw the Ziploc bag away. <laughs> All right, now we've got our seasonings, guys. So easy. We're doing a fourth teaspoon of garlic powder, a fourth teaspoon of onion powder, a fourth teaspoon of Italian seasoning, a fourth teaspoon of salt. I'm using red mineral salt. Uh oh, there's the husband. There's the husband. And a fourth teaspoon of pepper. And that's it. It's a fourth teaspoon of all the seasoning, so it's easy to remember. Now, guys, this recipe is going to be in the post as soon as I finish this. This uh, as soon as I finish the live video. Nay, nay. She's excited. Her daddy's home. The, the recipe is going to be in this post, but I also will fix it or post it again later when the meatloaf is done. Hey, Karen, I see you on there. Hey, Delilah, how are you guys doing? Guys, what are you doing for dinner tonight that's low carb or keto friendly? I'd love to know what you're doing. And then give me some hearts if you love meatloaf. Like, I love meatloaf. And when I first started eating keto, a friend of mine told me I'm going to miss so many things. I'm like, what am I going to miss? So then she started, like, naming off stuff. Then she was trying to actually talk me out of going keto. And she started naming off all these things I was going to miss. I was like, okay, that, you know, I will miss the cake. <laughs> Go ahead, keep on going. And she got to meatloaf, and I'm like, no, I will prove her wrong. There are meatloafs, guys, that you can cook that's low-carb because we have so many low-carb options out there now. The actual ketchup we're going to be using tonight is a Heinz No Sugar Ketchup. Let me show it to you. This is the Heinz No Sugar Ketchup. If you look at this, it tells us that a uh, one a serving size is one tablespoon. So one tablespoon has 10 calories, which I'm not concerned about. But look at the carbs. One carb count for a tablespoon. So if you put two tablespoons of topping on your meatloaf, that's two carbs. That's it. That's the only carb in the whole daggum recipe. So tell me I can't eat meatloaf? You can't. I can. I'm eat a lot of them. <laughs> I, 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 my mouth. Oh, sorry. Man. I hit your daddy. I saw it. All right. So we've got our ground beef. We've got one egg. We've got a cup of crushed pork rinds. We have a fourth teaspoon of garlic powder, onion powder, Italian seasoning, salt, and pepper. That's it. And now we're going to get our hands dirty. So this is the fun part. We're going to get our hands dirty. And the way I like to make these is I will... My world, this thing's crazy. What, the way I like to do this... <clears throat> my world, this... Okay, this thing is... Where the hell is my camera? Oh, I got it upside down. <laughs> the way I like to do my meatloaf is I actually uh, season them roll them up into meatballs, and then I move them over to my meatloaf muffin pan. This is what I call this muffin pan. It's a meatloaf muffin pan. Because if you roll them into meatballs, then you know what size each are, and you definitely can uh, make sure you control the amount in each muffin if you roll up into meatballs. So we're just getting our hands dirty here. The pork rinds is the breading. The pork rind is the breading that's holding this together, of course, with the egg as well. They cook in 15 minutes on 350, and then I like to top mine off with the ketchup as it's going into the oven. 
Some of my friends like to top it off with ketchup when it comes out of the oven. That is completely up to you. But guys, we love fast, easy, delicious keto recipes. If you're new <laughs> and you need getting started information, I'm not going to talk you out of keto. I'm actually going to tell you all the benefits of keto. So if you're new and you want some getting started tips because you're brand new, you've never asked for my tips before because guys, five years later, it's the same tips. I'm still doing the same thing five years later, maintaining my fat loss. For five years, or four years, it took me a first year to get it all off. But um, if you want the getting started tips, put getting started in the comments, and I'm going to send you getting started tips. And this just rolls into a thick meatball. <laughs> and now we're going to take it, and we're going to roll these into meatballs, like I said, and throw it into the muffin pan. Now, some people ask, do you need, do you need to spray the muffin pan? No, guys. Ground beef has a little bit of grease. Now this is a lean ground beef, so it's not gonna be really fat, but it does have some natural fat and that's gonna keep it from sticking. So you do not need to spray the pan down. Now, just so you guys know, because you're gonna see me mix, make it a whole lot more than these and you would out of a pound of ground beef, I did two pounds. Uh, Ricky loves meatloaf. He usually can eat five or six of these all by himself. So I went ahead and did two pounds <clears throat> and the recipe I just went over for you is for one pound. I doubled it all. <clears throat> All right, I'm just gonna keep on rolling them and sticking them in the pan. And then the next thing I do is push them down because we wanna make sure that when we push them down, I can make a little hole for the ketchup to sit in or at least have enough room for the ketchup to go on top. That was a little too big. I can see it. You can look at them and tell. Oh. So I love meatloaf and I used to use a meatloaf that actually was very fattening, but not only that, it was loaded with carbs because it was loaded with sugar. It was a brown sugar ketchup topping. I actually have not tried yet, just because I love this recipe and it's so easy, but we have the brown sugar swerve, and I'm thinking about uh, creating me a different topping to go on my meatloaf next time using the brown sugar swerve because the old meatloaf that I used to make, my family loved it. Now they love this too. They asked for it all the time. I, have to, I had to stop making it so much in the beginning because I was getting tired of it and they were begging for it. All right, I got another pan over here because I ran out of room. With one pound, you're not gonna need two muffin pans, but I used two pounds. Rolling them up and throwing them in. That was a little too big. Sure, I'm sure with that one. All right, and let me wash my hands real fast and I'm gonna come right back and we're gonna do the next step. Actually, I'm gonna wash, oh, they're dogs. I'm sorry, y'all, we just got home, so they're excited. What'd you do in my ring, baby? What'd you do in my ring? into the meatballs, put into our baking dish, our muffin pans. I'm gonna go ahead and throw this in the oven because guys, it's gonna take longer for my vegetables to cook than it is for the, the meatballs. So again, we're doing roasted broccoli. I just took broccoli, heavily drizzled with avocado oil, salt and peppered, put it on a roasting sheet, and we're fixing to put this in the oven on 350. Mm. Get in there. And then we're gonna go ahead and finish this out and add the meatloaf next. So I want that broccoli to cook for a couple of minutes because it literally takes longer for the broccoli to cook than this. So now that my hands are clean, we're fixing to get them dirty again. <laughs> we're going to now push the meatballs down into the pan to make sure we have enough room at the top to put in our ketchup topping. Now I love this Heinz no sugar ketchup. There are a lot of options out there, guys. A lot of options. There's a more expensive options. There's more, uh, less ingredient options. Like there's, there's options for low carb ketchup. Pick what is best for your family. Like I really like the Primal Kitchen products, but they're a lot more expensive and these taste really, really good. So this is what I opt for myself. That does not mean that you have to use the Heinz sugar-free ketchup. You can use whatever low carb ketchup fits your needs best. So there are several different options out there. I do like Jihoo's. 
Um, however, his is a sweeter taste instead of a tomato taste. And I really like the tomato taste of a Heinz ketchup. So when they come out with this Heinz sugar-free, I fell in love. All right, my hands are dirty. I'm fixing to finish up this bottle, so I'm not gonna worry about washing yet. <clears throat> I'm gonna throw this one away as soon as I finish. Might not even have any in there. I thought I did. One thing I like about this ketchup, if there's any in it, all right. Okay, start. there we go. I know I got some. I don't. I know I'm not wasteful. I like to use it all. Okay. One thing I like about this ketchup is it's thick. Let me wash my hands. Heinz uh, no sugar ketchup is it's thick just like a regular ketchup where G Hughes even though I love G Hughes his ke ketchup is a little watery it's a little runny I know I got I'm glad I bought another one y'all now if you are counting your carbs you guys know I've only had a very few carbs today so this is not a problem for me but if you need to know exactly how many carbs are in your meatloaves you can measure out your one to two tablespoons all right that's annoying I'm just gonna open a new one that's too annoying. I'm just going to open my new one. All right. See how easy it comes out? <laughs> so you can measure this if you want to. These are my primary carbs today. I mean, we're just putting the oven <laughs> on 350 for 15 minutes. If you want to cook it longer, you can, but 15 minutes, this ground beef is done every single time. Every single time it's done in 15 minutes. <clears throat> now, my daughter, she likes to add the ketchup after the meatloaf is cooked. That's completely up to you. I usually just add it and stick it in the oven, let it cook together. Uh, every once in a while, depending on the, the leanness of your ground beef, if it's really fatty, Sometimes it will, uh, that fat uh, will come up to the top of your meatloaf and mess with your ketchup. That's why I like to use lean ground beef, especially in meatloafs, but I like lean ground beef all the way around. And here we go. Look how pretty that is. We're going to throw these into the oven on 350 and I'll be right back. Make sure I can fit both pans. Now, when these come out of the oven in 15 minutes, you can easily... Um, you can easily add a little bit of parsley to the top, which I love to do. If you want to put some Parmesan cheese, but I mean, who, who does that with meatloaf? Not me. I love it right out of that pan. It's so delicious. All right, guys, we'll see if you have any questions for me while we're waiting just a second. Now, I can't be on the phone too long because if you guys are a customer of Prove It, and you got a notification today, we had a glitch in our system. So I've got several people to call and I wanna make sure that I help them out with their smart ship issues that happened over the last couple of days. So I can't be on here very long tonight, but I definitely wanna see if there's any quick questions I can answer. And guys, if you need my help, please, please just make sure you reach out to me through Messenger, through the Facebook, through the Keto Queen page, there's a message button right there on the homepage. Just send me a message, especially if you got that notification about a possible smart ship issue. Oh, I know, Karen. I don't know where in the world I got that idea from, but I sure did. <laughs> um, uh, let's see. They can't eat the meatloaf if they put breadcrumbs, oatmeal, even bread. That's true. That's true. That's why I use pork rinds, and that's why I use a sugar-free ketchup. It totally makes this keto-friendly. See, I use brown sugar and a little sloppy joe mix. Hmm. They have sugar uh, that is actually good for you, and that is the brown sugar swerve. So you can actually make a brown sugar sweet topping for your meatloaf if you certainly want to. I actually am going to try it out next time because I haven't done that. I don't know why. I just fell in love with this ketchup, and we've been using it ever since. But I may mix this up with a little brown sugar swerve next time. 
Can you have sugar-free Cool Whip? Just a little. Just a little new, I'd be perfectly fine with it. I wouldn't recommend it every single day on a sweet treat or just to put in your coffee every single day because if you look at the container, uh, I can't remember what it is it has in it. I'd have to look. Um, but there's something in it that I know I wouldn't want every single day. When you first started keto, did you go all in cold turkey or did you ease into it? Jennifer, I'm like 175% in everything I do, so I went straight in. That's just me as my personality. That's who I am. So, not required at all. Actually, the tips I have will tell you what you can do if you're going to ease into it. Uh, but I personally went all in. Like, I came home one day and I said, this is it. I've been reading for a couple of weeks. Like, there's no point in keep on reading. I just need to start somewhere. And I went through my pantry and I got rid of the sugar. I gave it away. I went through the pantry and I got rid of the cookies and all the different sauces we had. Like I got rid of the things I knew was filled with sugar. That's the first thing I did. And then I went to the grocery store and I literally started cold turkey, but that's who I am. That's who I am as a person. So that's the only way I would have been, been successful at it. Uh, you don't have to do that. You can ease into it. But if you want my getting started tips, put getting started in the comments and I'll send you some getting started tips. Uh, my first advice always is to look in your pantry. Look in your refrigerator and see what's in there. Uh, if there's things in there that you know is going to tempt you, get rid of it. Give it away as a gift. Give it away to your kids. Give it away to your grandkids. Just get rid of it. Uh, give it away to a homeless shelter. I did donate quite a few things to our uh, local homeless shelter. Uh, a lot of canned foods that I knew I would never eat again, like the brown beans and the, um, you know, all, not the brown beans, the, the black eyed peas and all the things that was in my uh, pantry that I knew I did not need and would not eat again, I, I donated it. Uh, so that's the first thing I always recommend is that you just go through your pantry, you go through your house and get rid of the things that you know are going to sabotage you um, because you can't be keto and you can't be super low carb if you have those things in your house. Uh, some of us have really strong personalities like myself and we're very strong willed and I can walk by chocolate all day long and it not bother me a bit. I can make a carrot cake for my husband, not touch it, but that's me as a person. I'm very strong and I'm five years in. Uh, but most are not that way. Most people are going to see the cookies and they're like, oh, I can just have one. Or they're not going to have one and then they're going to be feeling so deprived like this is the worst diet in the whole wide world <laughs> just because it's around or in the house. So that is one of my first advices is just going through your pantry and getting rid of the things you know you don't need. So anyone who's new that wants getting started tips, put getting started. Guys, if you've been following this page, it's the same tips I've been sending out for five years because I haven't changed a thing. I literally started from day one and I'm doing the same thing five years later. I feel amazing and I'm living my best life, feeling so much energy, having so much fun. Like I haven't changed a thing. Uh, and that's the awesome thing is you don't have to make it complicated. You can keep it super simple, following the same steps, not counting everything you eat. I'm telling you guys, it's amazing. I just look at my carbs from the get go. I've only counted my carbs for the first three weeks. For the first three weeks, I was doing everything everybody told me to. I was logging all of my food into this app called Carb Manager, and it told me how much fat I needed and how much protein I ate over and how many carbs I was under. And I'm like, what the heck? This don't make no sense. So that app was telling me that I needed to eat more food just because I needed more fat. And I'm like, I'm not hungry. And how am I going to just eat fat without eating more protein and without eating more carbs? Like, I, it didn't make any sense to me. And then I was like, okay, I'm feeling really good. In those three weeks, I was feeling amazing. However, I wanted something that was going to change my life forever. Like, I really needed to change my life, not just lose 20 pounds. Like, I needed to change my life for my sanity, for my health, for my depression. Like, I needed to change. And I knew that logging my food for the rest of my life was not going to work. So, as soon as I stopped doing it, I knew I'd gain all the weight back. So then I decided to take a whole new approach. I heard from this one man, his name's Rob DeBoer. He's a really cool guy. And he just really encouraged me to keep it simple. And he said, you know, you don't just eat fat, eat fat, eat fat, eat fat. I don't care what the apps tell you. You cook with healthy fats. You make your food taste delicious with healthy fats. That's what it's for. <laughs> and then don't be afraid of protein. Eat your protein. You need protein. Protein's good for your muscles, for your bones, for your hair. And then watch your carbs. That's what it's all about is watching your carbs. So that's what I do. I keep all of my focus on carbs, cooking and healthy fats and loving my protein. And I just keep it super simple. So anyone who's new that needs those getting started tips, put, them, put getting started in the comments and I'll send it to you. I'm going to jump off here because I really do need to reach out to some friends who are having some issues with their accounts. And I want to make sure I reach everyone as fast as I can. So I'm going to jump off, clean this kitchen real fast. I will post this meal for you guys later after it's finished. We're just doing the roasted broccoli. It's already smelling delicious. 
And we also have um, meatloaf muffins in the oven. So the meatloaf muffin recipe is right here as soon as I hit this finish button. And then tonight I will post it again. It will be in the blog for you. So later tonight after dinner, I will post it into the recipe blog. And you guys will have all of my recipes that I have so far. And I'm so excited for you guys. And I know you are loving it already because I've gotten so many awesome messages. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Guys, share this video. If I've ever been any help to you, share, please share, share the videos. Share, share, share. <laughs> share the videos so I can even share. reach more people and we can have more friends join us and give us more encouragement because this is what this page is all about, helping you get started, keeping you encouraged, keeping you inspired, sharing our successes together and like sharing awesome recipes. Like this is what it's all about. Uh, I changed my eating habits and my A1C went from 10 to 6.8. Oh my goodness. I'm proud of you too, Jennifer. That's awesome. All right, guys, I am going to go. I love you so much. I hate to have to cut it off, but I have to. And I will talk to all of you guys later. Bye.